Hello, I'm Dr. Charles T. Price, Medical Director of the International Hip Dysplasia Institute. The purpose of this video is to show you some ways to swaddle your baby so the hips will grow and develop properly. Hip dysplasia occurs when the hips are loose in the socket or even dislocated. Looseness of the hips is the most common abnormality in newborn infants, so proper swaddling is important to help keep the hips healthy. Incorrect swaddling, especially tight swaddling with the legs straight out like a papoose, can actually cause hip dislocation and hip dysplasia. So it's important to leave room for babies to move their legs freely. This animation shows what can happen when the baby's thighs are pulled tightly together. Tight swaddling can cause loose or immature hips to move upward and away from the socket wall. Studies from Japan, Turkey, and from American Indians have shown that tight swaddling in the papoose position can cause hip dysplasia and can even cause baby's hips to dislocate. A national program in Japan to teach proper swaddling reduced the frequency of hip dislocation from 3% to less than 1%. American Indians swaddled even tighter and had a hip dislocation rate of 33% until the practice was stopped. This video will show you some different ways to swaddle that are healthy for baby's hips. Mainly, it's important to leave room for the legs to move and spread apart. First, we will show you conventional swaddling with a blanket or cloth. Then we will show you a commercial product that can also be used for swaddling. The purpose is to show you that there are several ways to swaddle, but the hips need to be free regardless of how you swaddle your baby. This is especially important in the first three months of life when the hips may still be loose. The first two methods are examples of conventional swaddling using a blanket or cloth. First, the diamond swaddle. Lay the blanket out like a diamond, and fold the corner down. Place the baby with the shoulders on the folded corner. Tuck the left arm down and wrap over the baby's chest and tuck under the right side of the baby. Tuck the right arm down, wrap over the baby's chest and over the arm, and tuck under the left side of the baby. It's important to leave room for the legs to move. Bring the bottom corner up, twist and tuck under the baby. Make sure the hips can move up and out. Next is a square swaddle. Lay the blanket out square. Place the baby with shoulders even with the top of the blanket. Tuck the left arm down, wrap over the baby's chest, and tuck under the right side of the baby. Tuck the right arm down, wrap over the baby's chest and over the arm, and tuck under the left side of the baby. Again, it's important to leave room for the legs to move. Bring the bottom of the blanket up and over the legs to the level of the chest. Tuck the right and left sides under the baby by gently rolling from side to side. Make sure the hips can move up and out. The next method uses a commercial product called a sleep sack swaddle. This was developed to eliminate loose blankets because loose blankets in the crib may interfere with the baby's breathing and increase the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. This particular product consists of a wearable blanket or sleep sack that has a swaddle attached. Note that there are two strips of Velcro on the swaddle to help secure it in place. The baby is put in the sleep sack and the swaddle is stretched out to the sides. The right arm is placed at the baby's side. The swaddle is wrapped over the baby and tucked under the chest on the opposite side. Then the left arm is placed at the baby's side. The swaddle is wrapped over the baby and fastened to the cloth using the upper Velcro strip. This can be secured firmly to keep the arms in place. The lower Velcro strip should be loosely attached so the hips are not pulled together. Make sure there's plenty of room for the legs to move up and out. As an alternative, the arms can be placed across the chest so the baby's hands are closer to the face. 
Some parents, doctors, and nurses prefer to leave the hands or arms free, but there's no right or wrong way to secure the arms. To secure the arms on the chest, the baby is put in the sleep sack and the swaddle is stretched out to the sides. The right arm is gently bent at the elbow and placed on the baby's chest. The swaddle is wrapped over the baby and tucked under the chest on the opposite side. Then the left arm is gently bent at the elbow and placed on the baby's chest. The swaddle is wrapped over the baby and fastened to the cloth using the upper Velcro strip. This can be secured firmly to keep the arms in place. The lower Velcro strip should be loosely attached so the hips are not pulled together. Make sure there's plenty of room for the legs to move up and out. We've shown you several ways to swaddle your baby, so you can see that there are many variations. The important thing is to allow plenty of room for the legs to move so the hips are not squeezed together. Thanks for watching this video. You can learn more by visiting our website at www.hipdysplasia.org. The Hip Dysplasia Institute and this video are made possible through support from Larry the Cable Guy and his Get Her Done Foundation. Thank you.